Hello folks, how are you doing? Yeah, it's been a while since I've put together a, a computer hardware video, so apologies for that. And it might be a while before I put another one together as well, but um, for the time being, I've been buying and I've picked up a, well, it's an Amiga 500 in a, in a very tatty box. But you know what? It's nice to have the box regardless. So I've opened it. I've had a look at the machine briefly, but that's all I've done with it. I haven't powered it on, I haven't looked at it in any sort of great detail, so I thought we'd have a look at that together. Um, so what I find will be me seeing it for the first time as you do. So let's get in. The box opens the other way of course, just to be completely awkward. So yeah, tatty box, that's fine. And inside we've got the unit itself, which is really quite yellow, but we'll come back to that in a minute. It, oh, it does have, you can hear it, it's got quite a bit of a rattle. And it's actually got some damage in the corner as well, so I think it's had a bit of a tumble in post, but that's the risk you take. Oh, and a bit of plastic's just dropped out of it, okay. That is the trapdoor for the expansion, which is also bust, and the broken catch is inside the box. I have tried gluing it. In fact, I glued it yesterday, gave it a 24 hours to cure, and I, as soon as I tried to refit it, the computer it bust again. So I need to figure out a way of securing this properly. Um, leads and cables. We, yeah, okay, so these look like um, audio and video hookup, so I'll give that a go. It doesn't have a power supply with it. I was told about that when I bought it, so I've picked up another one. Um, what have we got? Looks like some some manuals. So we'll dig through those. A lot of packaging. This was incredibly well packed, actually. So even though it looks like it might have taken a knock in transit, I can't fault the seller because everything is very, very well wrapped. Not sure what that is. Um, one moment, I will get a knife. Let's have a look. Open the package without scratching what's in the package. That'd be that'd be good. Oh, I know what this will be. It'll be the TV modulator. Yeah. Okay. So that gives us our video out. I'm hoping this will be the mouse because we haven't found that yet. But let's have a look. Looks like it. Yeah. Um. Cool. Okay, let me just clear some stuff away and we'll have a look at this in a bit more detail. Okay, so let's have a bit of a closer look. Yeah, it's quite yellow. I don't know how well that's going to come out on the camera, but the case and definitely the keys, yeah, they could do with going up a few shades. So, a little bit of peroxide might be in order. And then we've got this here, which is broken. I don't know whether that was like that when it was shipped to me, or whether that's happened in transit. From the damage to the expansion slot tray, I would say it's probably happened in, in transit as well, because that fell out of place when I opened the box. It was very well packaged, actually. It was really well wrapped in bubble wrap, so I can't really fault the sender. Not like um, oh, it was an Atari 800XL I bought a couple of years ago and that had like a, a sheet of newspaper wrapped around it and it bounced around the box and it was in bits when it got to me and I don't seriously think the guy wanted to um, use that as any sort of padding or protection. It was so ridiculous. I think he just wanted to show me an interesting article. But, but anyway, this was better wrapped. But it still looks like it suffered a bit of damage. I can't see any other damage to it apart from that in the expansion slot. Um, well, there's another expansion slot there on the side. I don't know what that does, but it's in place. I'm going to leave it for now. Uh, around the back. Ooh, what have we got? What have we got around the back? So, mono, so that'll be audio out. RGB video, lovely. Power. Parallel serial. 
disk drive, left and right audio, so that's be the stereo, and two joystick ports. I like the way Commodore put them on the back, which is preferable to the Atari ST, which puts them underneath the machine. Uh, what have we got around the corner? Oop. Rattling when I move it. Floppy disk drive. Okay, let's have a look at what else it came with. So, yeah, that is the a modulator for plugging into a TV, so I'm assuming that's composite video out in RF at the back. Okay, that's fine. I seem to remember them coming with those. Um, that is the mouse. Buttons feel good on it, actually. I think this is referred to as the tank mouse for obvious reasons, but if you're an Amiga person and you know different, please correct me if I'm wrong balls in it um, yeah that one's a clean out but not now got this funky cable so what have I got I've got RF lead and RCA lead and then I've got this funky thing so I've got one of them I'm not sure what that would connect to. Really not sure about that. That doesn't seem to... looks like it fits anything. Oh, do you know? No, no, I thought it was... Uh, I thought it would click into there, but no. And then I've got this thing. What's that? A printer cable, maybe? I don't know. Again, if you're an Amiga person and you know these machines, please let me know. So, in terms of manuals, what have we got? Let's have a look. I was kind of hoping for some software too, because I do have some Amiga discs floating about, but there's somewhere I can't just put my hand on them right now, so... Never mind. So what have we got? Product catalogue for Gold Disc, the leader in Amiga software. I will have to take their word for that one. Okay, not familiar with it, but what's that? I don't know, it's in a foreign language. How to load a, a, how to load a single sheet. That is something to do with a printer, which I don't have. Ah, maybe that's what one of those cables was it. Yeah, connecting for a printer. Anyway, um, some sort of warranty notice. Use a manual for the video adapter, which I presume is that thing. Uh, Electronic Arts warranty card. Okay. The Commodore. Oh, Commodore the emulator to emulate the BBC Micro on the Commodore Amiga. That's interesting. Okay. I mean, they've got the manual, but I don't have the actual emulator, but that's fine. Um, Commodore 14-inch colour monitor manual, which, of course, I don't have either. Uh, process card. So that was presumably when it was packed in the factory. Packed by SG, worker number 83. Okay. Second diagram of... I don't know. Okay. Uh, reply envelope to Commodore Business Machines UK. Empty. Um, that's with the 90s registration form. So it's a class of the 90s Amiga education pack, apparently. Okay. Uh, instructions for return out of warranty. Ooh. You must complete your warranty card. Okay. Uh, does it have said warranty card inside? Yep. Commodore Granada Computer Services. Warranty registration card, envelope for return, another one of them. Um, uh, 
Oh, here we are. After turning the computer off, please wait at least 30 seconds before turning the computer back on again to ensure all data and the memory has been reset. Shorter switching intervals may bring up a guru message. I don't want one of them. Uh, which may be reset by pressing the left mouse button. Okay. And another packing slip. Uh, do not attempt to connect a printer to your Amiga computer until you've read the section about printers. Fine, I don't have a printer, so that's moot. Um, some sort of problem solving? Jeez, uh, please read this first if you have a problem setting up your computer. Okay. And, oh, congratulations. Congratulations on the purchase of your new Commodore home computer, with which I'm sure you'll spend many happy hours. I sincerely hope so. As you know, your system is under warranty for a 12-month period. Okay, I didn't know, but that's, you know, it's good too. Always interesting to find these little, uh, little bits of information that tend to get lost. Uh, oh god, another important notice. To make a backup of your discs, please boot up using the workbench supplied. Yes, well, I don't have any discs handy at the moment at all. And, oh, Amiga Basic. Microsoft Basic for the Amiga. And... That's in... German? Something to do with the monitor. Okay. Cool. Okay, so yeah, it didn't come with a power supply, but I have bought one from another seller, which apparently has been tested as working. So I'll take the seller's uh, word on that one. It's incredibly yellowed, it's incredibly dirty, but that's fine. I don't mind a challenge and I don't mind cleaning something up. But for the time being, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put power to this thing and see if it actually works. Maybe I shouldn't. I mean, it does have a bit of a rattle to it, so maybe plugging it in isn't the best idea, but do you know what? I just want to know. Okay, first time hooking up an Amiga. So, let's see. I won't worry about the mouse, but I'm going to need a picture, so I presume that just goes in there. And sticks out about a mile. Power supply. Yeah, we're going to need one of those, aren't we? Yeah. Presumably goes that way. Okay. I'll plug that into the video out. We'll see what it does. Okay, so this might do something. It might do nothing. I have no idea. Let's try and get everything in shot. I've literally never tried this before, so I don't know if it works or not. Let's see if we can get the, the screen in shot and... Got a power light and a white screen. Hey, look at that. And I can hear the disk drive clicking as well. So that's a good sign. The picture isn't brilliant. It's a little fuzzy. But it's working. At least that's as far as I can test it. It powers up the disk drive clicks. And I've got a display, so... They're not too shabby. Okay, that's encouraging. Until I get my Amiga discs, that really is the limit of my testing on the hardware level at the moment. So I think for the rest of this video, what I'll do is I'll concentrate on the cosmetics. So I think what we'll do is we'll strip it down and we'll clean it. We'll do something about the yellow in plastics. Yeah, I think that'll be a good course of action. And then hopefully by the time I've done all that, I'll have my discs handy and we'll be able to go a little bit further with it. Excellent. So it's a few days later and I have been playing about with the expansion slot trapdoor and somehow I've actually made it worse. So I did try re-gluing the part again and it failed again instantly. So that's a non-starter. And I was checking the fit and I had the trapdoor about that position and I let my finger off and it fell and this whole corner broke off. And honestly, that's that's all I did. So it must have been weakened anyway. It must have already had a whack. Um, I think there's, there's quite a few cracks in the case actually looking at it. 
Well, yeah, this whole section broke off, so I've had to re-glue that. And I've created um, a hack or a bodge, whatever you want to call it, to keep the door closed for now. Until I can get a new trap door, which is really what I need. Uh, one that doesn't cost £10 as well, because that seems to be the going rate on eBay and I refuse to pay it. What I've done is I've taken a piece of metal. It's actually a piece of Meccano in this case, and I've made a hook. So that fits in there. It's not the most elegant solution, but it does seem to work. So let's see if I can get that to focus a little bit better. Yeah, it's just a piece of metal that forms a little spring hook. If it'll focus, it will not. There we go. And that will actually hold the, the trap door shut quite well. Without any problems. Not the most elegant solution, I know. But trust me, it does work. It holds the door in place. And that'll do for the time being until I can sort this properly. So... What I want to do now is look for more damage because I can see I can see cracks all over the place actually. So I think it's about time I strip this thing down and have a proper look at the condition of the case. So I'm looking at the case and I'm seeing three screws at the front and three at the back. And then there's two here which I think are just for holding in the disk drive so I can probably leave those alone. The warranty seal looks like it's been broken, but it looks like it's been pushed in. So it's as if somebody's put the finger in it. It doesn't look like it's actually been picked out and unscrewed. So it may be the case that this computer's never been apart before. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see if we can uh, tease it out of the way and, and have a look. I mean, the screws don't look gnarled up at all. Don't know. Let's start taking some screws out and um, see if we can get this apart. And then we'll have a look at the full damage. Right, let's come right away. Yep, straight away there's a piece of plastic hanging there, so that doesn't look good. Right, let's try and flip this over without causing any more damage. Okay. Is that enough to get the top off? Not sure. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yeah, that's gone. Okay, so that's glue job number one fix that let me put this somewhere safe it's broken here uh, can I lift this keyboard out I've never worked on an Amiga before so this is all brand new to me yeah that looks loose so can I just unplug that yep Right. Uh oh. That goes somewhere. I'll keep hold of that. I suppose I could take. Let's take the shield off next, I think. So I'm seeing a screw here. we got let me just ground myself actually so that goes underneath we've got a bracket there will this come away now not completely what am I missing ah like the Atari, it's got these little um, little locking tabs. So let's get those straightened up. Yep, 
more broken bits of plastic on the top so let's put them to one side they belong somewhere and we've made our way to the board let's see if we can get the disc drive out so I've got two screws either side at the front and two that go right through the case so let's remove the ones underneath first which I might have been better doing earlier on but there it is if I get the right screwdriver it'll work better right Oh, tell a lie, the, uh, the, the other front screw is underneath. Okay, hopefully that's free. Yep. So let me just unplug it from the board. Deal with that later. Right, so I think the board is free in that all the screws are out of it but it's held in at the back by the ports and there's a little plastic clip at the front and given how brittle the plastic seems to be on this I'm going to have to be very very careful with this but if I can gently pull this back maybe I can tease the board out don't like it don't like it I've got a feeling this might break as well. I wonder if there's another way I can do it. No, I think that's it. I think it's going to have to go. There's no room to uh, to swing it out at the back. So, yeah, I'm just going to have to go for it, I think. Let me get a screwdriver on. And let me be as gentle as I can with this. No, I'm going to use my fingers. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought was going to happen. I was as gentle as I could and it still broke. This thing is incredibly brittle. That's ridiculous. I mean, it will be held in with the screws, but that's not really the point. I don't like causing damage. But there was no way around that. So let's see if I can get the whole board out and keep it in its bottom shield as well. Yeah, that's come free. There we go. And where are we with the case? So, trapdoor broke here and broke the catch. That's got a temporary fix on it. It's broken here. There's a crack in the plastic. So I'll need to glue that. The, yeah, that clip bust. I was so gentle with it, I couldn't have been more careful with it, and it still broke when I was trying to take the motherboard out. The expansion trapdoor is fine, and I am not going to remove it. I'm going to leave it exactly where it is. I'm going to clean the case with that in place, because I know the minute I touch it, that's going to fracture as well. Apart from that, I think the bottom half of the shell is okay. Let's have a look at the top. Yeah, top case. Okay, so the major damage is here. Well, that's separated completely, so that needs work. So I'll glue that. There's a little support here, but there's not one here. But that's okay, because I've found it. So that'll need gluing back in. And then there's just random bits. Plastic that have just fallen out of it. I may find where they go, I may not, I don't know. It looks like it's had a tumble in the post, or who knows what, where it does seem extremely brittle. I mean, unusually brittle. I mean, old plastic can be brittle, but this is this is like to another, another level. I don't know whether that's an Amiga thing, or this particular machine's been subjected to some heat or something. I don't know. I don't know. It just seems very, very brittle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try cleaning it, in fact, I'm not. I'm going to glue it first, then I'm going to clean it, and we'll see how it comes out. Yeah, I'll use a bit of this Gorilla Glue. 
I think it's the same tube I used on the Atari 800XL, so I hope it's still good. But that hasn't fallen apart, so it must be good glue. So yeah, I won't glue on camera because it's just too much of a fiddle and I want to make sure everything goes back nice and straight. But I'll get to the repairs and I'll bring you back when it's done. Yep, so it's had its day to dry and uh, everything seems to be in the correct number of pieces now anyway. The, uh, the top case isn't flapping around anymore, it's a lot more solid. And yeah, I've even re-glued that hook that broke. Although I suspect as soon as I put the board back in, that's going to break off again. But you never know. We'll try it. So I think now I'm going to clean it. And then I think we'll get on with some retro brighting because it is a bit yellow. So let's get this prepared. In fact, if I'm going to be washing parts, do you know what? I'm going to throw the keycaps in as well. So yeah, let me take a picture of this keyboard. And then I'll strip that down as well. So any keys that add a stabiliser bar on, I've just done that off camera um, and just flipped the, the bar up from underneath to disconnect it with a screwdriver. I did that off camera because I wanted to get in close with it and I didn't want to cause any damage so I thought that was safer than working around the camera but um, yeah they're all off and yeah there's a little bit, of, uh, little bit of fluff in there but I've seen worse. It's not good but it's not terrible either so I'll give this a clean up in a bit. But I think what I'll concentrate on now is washing the case and the keys. And keys are in the ultrasonic, so let's just give that a little bit. And that saves all the scrubbing. That'll do it all for me. Cool. So let's do something about the yellowing now that the case is all back in one place and is nice and clean. I'm going to use this stuff, which I've had good results with in the past, so I'll continue to use it. So let's bladder the case in this, wrap it in some cling film and get it under a light. Lovely. And this is a bottle that I've just found in the kitchen cupboard of peroxide. Having just bought a bottle of it, thinking I'd run out. I love it when that happens. Just, yeah. Anything where it costs me more money, that's fine. That's great. I can't stress how important it is to wear gloves when doing this. And while it does come out of your skin eventually, it takes its time, and you'll be uh, you'll be walking around with blonde fingers for about a week. Otherwise, trust me, I know. Don't ask me how.
that'll do. Right, let's get the light box out. Okay, there we go, one light box, which is basically just uh, a cardboard box with tin foil wrapped around it. Um, sorry about the sound quality, um, This I'm doing this in a bit of an echoey room. Well, the bathroom, basically, because it's out the way. So let's just close that up. And then I've got my... It's supposed to be a full spectrum light, but whether or not it actually is, I don't know. But I know it's incredibly bright and it does seem to work. So let's get that hooked up. And we're cooking. Time to do the keys, because they've yellowed. They're not too bad, but they're not great, so they could they could do with a bit of peroxide, I think. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint each one with some peroxide, put it in one of these tubs, and then just cover the top with a bit of cling film. I think that's probably the best way to do it. So, um, yeah, let's do that. Really, some sort of liquid solution would be better, but it is what it is, and I've got what I've got, so... Make sure they all get a, a good coating. And that can go in there. Okay, I just need to do that um, a lot more times. Okay, I'll bring you back on it still. And we're done. So it's a nice day today, so I'll get these out in the sun and hopefully they'll lighten up a little bit. Space bar I've done separately because it just wouldn't fit in the uh, in the containers. And I've also done the trap door and the expansion port door as well, which I said I wouldn't take off, but actually came off quite easily when the computer was dismantled. So yeah, let's get these in the sun. My God, that's a yellow power supply. I mean, that's, that's really bad. You can see it's not so bad there on that side, but uh, when you get to the top of it, I don't know how well that's going to come out in the camera, but yeah, that's yellow. That's really yellow. So, I think we'll turn this down as well, and we'll give it the same peroxide treatment. Yeah, that's a good idea. Now, I don't know with these power supplies how safe they are. I know the Commodore, the VIC-20 and the 64 power supplies can be a little twitchy. That is a screwdriver that doesn't fit. Bear with me a second, I'll get one that does fit. Fairly simple thing, really. Okay, let's see if we can get the guts out of it. So, you and you and you. That's a big heat sink. Now, there's a couple of really big capacitors I've just spotted in there, so it's not been powered on for a while, but even so, I don't want to really give myself any sort of zap, so I need to be a little careful. There we go. Okay, so that gives me a case I can uh, I can clean up and retrobrite. Excellent. I'm hoping the camera's picking that up okay, but you can, well, to my eyes anyway, you can clearly see the difference between the top and the bottom where it's faded. So, yeah, usual drill, I think. Let's, uh, let's get some peroxide on it. Keycaps are done. Uh, looking pretty good, actually. All the yellowing seems to have gone. They haven't gone back to a bright white. It's kind of a cream colour, but I'm assuming that's correct anyway. So let's get the keyboard back together. The keyboard could be cleaner, but do you know what? It's not that bad. It's a bit fluffy, but they do get dirty. Just by the nature of sitting on top of the computer. And they're hard to clean. So I'm just going to get rid of this... Uh, this dirt that belongs to somebody else. 
and then we'll give the whole thing a clean down and then I can reinstall the keycaps. So I'll just wait for that to dry, but that's a bit cleaner, and um, yeah, that had to go. Like I say, it wasn't that bad, I've seen far worse, but still, that's somebody else's dirt and I don't want it. So I'll start reassembling the keycaps back onto the keyboard, and I did take a picture of it before I took it apart, so I know where everything goes, but do you know what? Um, I can do better than that, I've actually got the box. So I'll just copy off that. So maybe copying off the box wasn't the best idea because there are differences. So this key right here and that same key on the box are different. It's the same with some of the characters on the numbers. I'm assuming this is the American keyboard. It has a Commodore key on the box. I do not have a Commodore key. I just have two Amiga keys. Yeah, there's differences. So it's just as well I took pictures plus I did put a couple in the wrong place anyway because I'm that sort of idiot. But um, yeah, it's back together and you know what? It does look a lot brighter, a lot cleaner. So I am pleased with that. That is a result. So just before I put the computer back together, I'm just having a little look at the main board. Because I'm going to recap it, but probably not in this video. But I'm just making a note of the values so I can order them. And what I've noticed over here... It says B52 Rock Lobster. And from what I can tell online, that was the the code name for the Amiga 500 project, I think. But if that's incorrect, I'm sure someone will let me know. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. Case is all back in one piece and looking a lot brighter now for a little bit of peroxide. It's not all flopping around. Yeah, do you know what? I'm going to start putting this back together. So, let's put the main board back in. That just slots in. Now I did repair this little clip here from this incredibly brittle case, but I've got a feeling the minute I try to snap this board back in, that's going to go flying again, but we'll see. Yeah, it doesn't feel doesn't feel good. I think it needs a sharp tug to get that uh, that board to clip in, but I really think that clip's going to go flying. Make sure I'm lined up at the back, and I am. Ironically, this all has to come apart uh, in a future video for a recapping, but possibly some modifications too. But just for now, so I've got parts floating everywhere. Yeah, there it goes. And that wasn't going to survive. 
I didn't think it would. I've never ever known anything this brittle before on a computer. It's incredible. I think that looks a lot brighter a lot cleaner you know what it's a nice day so why waste it let's do some more retro brighting and let's start off with the 520 module and then we'll do the mouse as well so I think these come apart fairly straightforward I think they're just a push fit the top case so starting at the connector end if I just gently twist a screwdriver in there that's starting to move oh yeah there it goes and we're in so I've got a top case to retro bright. If I undo a couple of screws here, I should be able to get the board out. Yep. Presumably that'll just lift out, it seems to be. Yep. Okay, cool. Let go. So that can be cleaned up. And the mouse, yeah, this all looks a bit grubby, so why not? Let's take the ball out. I can see two screws. Uh, top lids come away quite nicely. How do I get this out? Right, I can see a screw here, here and here. Let's have them. That's free. Take this back one out. And that's free. Let's see if the guts will just lift out. They do. Excellent. Okay, so what I'll do is I will give all these parts a wash. And stick them outside in the sun with a bit of peroxide and they should brighten up nicely right plastics are all done so mouse came out really nice it wasn't that yellow to begin with anyway so that's fine 520 modulator that's come out nice now the power supply it's a lot better than it was it does look a lot cleaner but it's not perfect and i think the plastic's been damaged by the, the sort of heat this has been running at 
And I think the, the camera's making it look better than it actually is, but there is still a little bit of yellowing. It's considerably better. But yeah, I spent, and I'm not even joking here, a week and a half retro brightening this. A week and a half. And at this point, I've decided I just don't care anymore. It's staying that colour. And if it wants to go yellow again, I'm going to let it. But um, yeah, let me see if I can... So the bottom was pretty white and the top... Don't know if you're going to see that contrast or not. But you know what? It's a power brick. Good enough for me. So let's start putting things back together. Right, so there we go. It's all been retro brighted and it's looking a lot cleaner and brighter. The case has all been repaired, apart from that trapdoor. I'm going to see if I can pick one of those up, actually, for the expansion trapdoor. It's not a priority, and I'm certainly not going to pay the £10 that people are asking for on eBay. That's just ridiculous. So that temporary fix that I've done, that'll just have to, that'll just have to make do for the time being. Honestly, it's really not that critical, but it does highlight just how fragile a case is on this. I've never, ever known a computer case to be this brittle. It's unbelievable. You look at it the wrong way and you feel it's going to crack. But um, yeah, that'll probably do for this video. All I really wanted to do was have a look at what I purchased, see if it works. And it's sort of, well, it boots. I can't do any more testing than that until I find my discs. But I do want to go a bit further with it in the future. So I'm probably going to recap it. Um, I wouldn't mind getting a GoTech for it as well. And I wouldn't mind... An expansion for it, a memory expansion, so I can play the better games too. I think with an Amiga, that's that's really required. And I've seen them on eBay, and they're really, really cheap for the um, the recreations, and I'm just wondering how good they are. Other thing I'm wondering about is, how good are these power supplies? Because I know Commodore power supplies with the VIC-20 and the C64, they're a bit twitchy. I've not heard any bad reports about Amiga power supplies, and if they're fairly solid, then I'll just run with it. If they're a little bit iffy, then I'll change it. I don't know. I'll read up on that and I'll um, I'll make a decision. But yes, I've got other things planned for this machine. But right here, right now, I've evaluated it as much as I can. And I've cleaned it up. And I think it looks pretty smart. So I'll call the video here. So as always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.